So in the first video, we downloaded all the HTML, <clears throat> and then we um, parsed it to create this um, events.csv. Uh, in this third step, what I want to do is I want to convert all the addresses inside of that CSV um, into actual latitude and longitude coordinates. And I see that my um, geocode.ipnb is, well, what I just created, that's going to be doing that. And so here I am, I'm importing pandas as PD, and then geopandas as GPD, and I've read it all in. And so this is a column I'm interested in dealing with right here. Already I see that in my parsing, I messed it up a little bit and I have um, uh, kind of no separator between the city and the, the address. And so one of the things I'm going to do right away is I'm going to say df um, address equals df address uh, dot stir dot replace. And I want to say um, Madison. I never have a space before that. So I'm just going to put a semicolon before that because um, I know that that's what the different geocoding tools like. I'm going to do that. And then the other thing that I'm just going to fix right now because I know it's an issue is that the geocoders get confused when you say 1700 block. Um, they're looking for one specific address. And so I'm just going to say dot replace the word block with just nothing and and that is not quite working is it i, I have to say like dot stir dot replace great and so now i've cleaned these addresses up a bit so how do i actually do geocoding well um if i look over here in geopandas this is the documentation for it and there's all these different providers they give one example of a provider um, right here which is this nominatum is basically open map quest and so that's a nice free one to use. And so I'm going to specify this over here, just as an example. And um, and then this is my name right here. This is my address. And I'll just try copying one of these as a kind of a simple case, um, just like so. And, and my problem here is that when I imported GeoPandas, I did it as GPD. Let me say uh, GPD. And it's complaining because it doesn't want it to be user agent. They want me to actually um, say who I am and then they can kind of somehow block me or something if I'm using it too heavily. And I'm doing this for CS320. And now I actually get some, some coordinates right here, which is what I had wanted. Um, and so what I can also do is instead of just passing in one string, I can pass in a column, right? So I could say, data frame from before, and I could do that address column. And so I could try that. It'll take a little bit longer because it's doing like five of them. And that works for most of them. You can see that some of them still don't work, like this third one. Um, the geocoding gets confused by um, coordinates like this. If I was using a different geocoder, like say Google, it would probably figure that out. But I think that's fine for us as long as um, as long as there are not too many, we can we can try to miss a few incidents. And, and whenever you're doing data science and you have to drop something, um, it's good practice to kind of quantify in your um, final reports, like, well, what exactly are you giving up so people know how much um, they can infer from the data. Okay, so what I think we'll do here is we will um, uh, save that in geo. And then what I'm gonna do after that is I'm gonna say geo and that geometry and what I want to do is I want to put that inside of my original data frame. So I'm going to say data frame geometry uh, equals this thing. Let me just look at that uh, DF there. Let's try and take a moment. And, um, and then let me head down here. And um, the, the last thing I want to do, if I look at the type of DF at this point, it's still a regular data frame. So I should probably say something like up here, like equals um, geopandas.geodata frame of df and then we'll give that a moment and then what i can do down here is i can actually save that thing so i can say like to file and i will call that um, events.shape this time and um and it's complaining a little bit so column names are longer than 10 characters and so let me just peek at that um what columns are are kind of too long um it looks like the incident type and and so maybe i don't even really care about that so maybe what i should do is just drop that 
Um, I think like the incident is interesting. And what else is interesting? Um, the date is interesting, of course, if I want to make my animation. And then my geometry is interesting. Okay, so I'm just trying to do those three. Whenever I put a list inside of brackets, I'm saying that those are the columns I want. So I'm going to do that. And now if I delete this, I can head over here. And I see that, well, what did I save my file as? I saved it as this events.shape. And of course, shape files come with a lot of friends, right? So those are these all these other files that go with my shape file. Uh, but I'll be able to use this by Geo, for, with GeoPandas in the next step. Again, even though there's not a lot of code here, I broke this up into its own notebook because um, geocoding involves accessing the internet. Um, it's, it's accessing a kind of an uh, online web service. And so I just want to do that once and then save my shape file so I don't have to keep hitting that web service every time. One last thing that I almost forgot was that I was just doing this on the first five rows and um, to get my code working. And after that's done, I think we can do a kernel restart and run all and, um, and then actually get all of the data. And so I will just take a moment as this runs. And, um, and I'm just trying the video there because it might actually, oh, faster than I thought. Okay, so that seems good. So I'm geocoding down here. Actually, sorry, this is the one where it's going to be slow. So we'll see if it gets done within a moment or two. Otherwise, um, otherwise I'll just end the video and you can trust that this shapes file will be ready um, next time. Yeah, so this is taking too long. So anyway, um, I'm just going to hit uh, end the video now.